everybody. Today I'm going to be doing cookbooks or if you'd say where I'm from, cookbooks. So we're going to do a lot of cookbooking today and I have quite a lot and I had this from my, just to let you know, Once Upon a Time Book Club Christmas box, a limited edition one and uh, it's my little apron and I think it's really cool and pretty so I'm wearing it today because I thought it was appropriate since I'm doing cookbooks. Anyway, got a lot to go through. We've had a lot of cookbooks over the years and there's going to be some obvious ones, there's going to be some not so obvious ones and there's going to be some... It, it, I just love cookbooks. Okay, here we go. Maybe this one you don't know much about is Michel Roux. He's quite a famous chef, a French chef. Um, this book's all about eggs. Yeah, it's a boring co cover and whatever else. I don't know what happened to the actual dust cover if it ever had one. But that wasn't the point of buying this book. This book. The point with this was we wanted to know how to cook with eggs properly. And yes, there is a proper way of cooking eggs. You need to scramble them, to boil them, to poach them. But it gets more advanced than that. It gets more into how to use them in desserts, how to make your own custards. And it's beautifully illustrated, really simple follow recipes. I use quite a few of these recipes. He does lots of uh, chocolate cake recipes. And yes, it does involve cooking with eggs. So it's just um, a great little book. And it's not that big. It's quite heavy though. Um, there's a lot of, lot of recipes here that involve using eggs when in the cooking process. So thought this would be a great one to introduce to you. Yes, I was a bit weeded out when I saw that it was an actual book just about eggs, but there's more involved with this and it's well worth going to if you're into your cooking, your baking. Next up is Oh She Glows by Angela Lydon. I've got the dogs in the room, so they're making quite a bit of noise. And if you've got any sensitive food issues, these are a really good book. This is a really good book to look for, look at um, and consider what to, different ways of cooking, making life healthy or your eating choices healthy. And it's more of a lifestyle choice. It gets you thinking about food differently. There are some recipes um, that are a bit, a bit different and a bit... Mm, I'm not sure about that, but you've got to give them a go and give it a try because you might surprise yourself, as I did, because I can be quite fussy about what food I eat. Good one to use uh, if you're on a health um, on a health start, particularly for the new year, as many people do go on their health start, healthy eating, exercise and so on. Um, really easy book to follow, really nice recipes and um, I highly recommend this one. Next of the healthy books is Joyous Health and this is by Joy McCarthy. Um, it has meal plans in there, it has a 10 day meal plan I believe, it has <laughs> the dog's moaning, it has a food journal in there, an example of a food journal that you could follow, um, it has some great recipes, I've used this quite a lot and um, we do have in our family some food intolerances. Um, this one's a great one if you've got food intolerances and how to go and use alternatives. Um, a lot of people, you know, are allergic to eggs and nuts and various other things and gluten. Um, this one helps you give alternatives to those foods and um, yeah, I highly recommend this book. It's really good. There's lots of recipes, easy to follow, um, easy to make. It's just, again, this is about to a it's, it's choosing different ways and how to approach your food choices. And if you've got that mindset and you're willing to do it, this is a really great book to follow. If you are a lover of baking, this butter book is fabulous. I love this book. It's by Rosie Dakin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, she has a store in Vancouver. I haven't visited it yet. I don't know why I haven't gone there yet. It's apparently it's beautifully decorated. It's very pastels, pastels. Um, she does amazing cookies or oh, cakes, all sorts of things. And highly recommend. I have been using this book. Um, I've been using it with the kids, and the kids love following the recipes as well. Um, 
nice, beautifully illustrated, beautiful pictures. Um, one, one of her main recipes that I use a lot are her marshmallows and they're so easy to make marshmallows and she actually sells them in some of the local stores in Vancouver so if you can if you can pick some up or make them yourself and you love to bake I definitely get I definitely recommend this book this is a great baking book favorite Jamie Oliver everybody loves Jamie Oliver if you don't you should um he's got some he's the one who kind of got me on the cooking bug I remember watching him when I was oh gosh I'll probably in my 20s I remember moving into our first place together, me and my husband, or then boyfriend, and we um, we wanted to find different ways and different recipes. And each weekend we would cook different things for each other. And sometimes he would cook the main one, and he and I would have uh, the dessert, or vice versa. So we used to use a lot of his books as well as another one that I shall be showing you soon. And. Um, easy to follow recipes, simple, easy to find ingredients. Um, this wasn't one of his earlier books. Um, I used to have his earlier books. I don't know what happened to those. I think we've done a lot of traveling over the years. So I think they may have gotten lost along the way, but anyway, Jamie Oliver, you can't go wrong, particularly his early, early cookbooks. They were really good and so easy to follow and his energy and her, the way he brings food alive. I used to love watching his shows, The Naked Chef, that's the one, that's the one you should really get because that was when he started out and it was brilliant and his videos are amazing, I'm s I have no doubt he's got some YouTube videos going on up there, I don't watch them but, or at least I haven't watched any recently, but yeah, Jimmy Oliver, can't go wrong. Next one is Nigella Lawson, we've got the Beast book, we've got a couple of other, other books as well, again when we first bought her, her earlier cookbooks, um, I think they got lost along the way when we were traveling or we just took out the recipes um, that we wanted just because we have so many books that we have to travel with. Anyway, we kept this one, we kept it in its entirety. It's a great book, we use this a lot over Christmas, there's Halloween recipes in here, there's uh, some cookie recipes here which I use with the kids and when we're baking we have... Uh, I think there's Easter recipes in here, so it's all different different times of the year where she does all this seasonal baking and cooking and the food. And it's, it's just, you gotta love Nigella Lawson. She just presents the food really well. She's a big storyteller and there's a lot of little stories in here. And I just, I just love the way her books are composed, put together. And yeah, I highly recommend this book, The Boy Who Bakes. And he won the Great British Bake Off. I don't know which year, but he ra he won it, and it's Ed Kimber. And I have used his recipes quite a few times. And this again, they're so easy to follow. I think he does a Genoese cake in here, and it's really amazing. Oh, he does all sorts of cookies as well. Just, just really. Oh yeah, these <laughs> the mini lemon cakes. These are the ones I'm constantly cooking because. My husband loves them, my kids love them, and yeah, I try to avoid making these because as soon as I make them, they're gone. And they make a lot, I make a lot when I do them. So yeah, they, they probably last a day. But he's got some great recipes. If you look, again, if you love baking, great book to follow. Um, some very, some British baking, but it's not that you can't get it in North America. Everything that he puts in there, pretty much can get it in North America. Um, so yeah, a Christmas present and I think it was my mother-in-law and when I thought it, I saw it, I thought, oh, it's really old. <laughs> and this was about 20 years ago when I got this book. Well, it's actually less than that. It's about 15 years ago when I got this book. And so it was old even when I got it. But this is the cookbook, the Good Housekeeper's Step-by-Step -step Cookbook. And this, I got to say, is absolutely bloody amazing. It's got some fabulous recipes, they're really easy and well worth getting. I mean, yeah, sure, it's it's some, I mean, the pictures are awful, I mean, really. But, uh, you know, if uh, you, you just want some basic, basic cooking ideas, easy to follow recipes, because I like easy to follow recipes, I'm not wanting the complicated stuff. 
I won't cook it if it's complicated and there's about 10 steps to everything just to put one thing together that's devoured in like 10 minutes. It drives me insane. But this is a really good book. If you're a university student who's going off, hasn't done much cooking in their time because mum and dad always does the cooking for you, or at least probably your mother does, uh, then get one of these books because you've got everything in here, absolutely everything, and it will be a money saver for you as well. Okay, as you can see, this one, and you don't even know what it is, but I do, was given to us as a Christmas gift. Oh, about, whew, is when we kind of first moved out to Canada, it's probably within the first few years of moving out to Canada, and one of our, uh, my husband's cousin's husband, or partner, and he just loves to cook. And he said, if we love cooking, this would be a great cookbook, cookbook to get. And he gave his copy to us. And we, as you can see, we have just delved into this over the years. And it was already being delved into prior for us getting it. Pruleith's Cookery Bible. Um, and it's amazing. I have used so many recipes out of this book. I love her pastry recipes. They never ever fail to, uh, they're, they're never wrong. Doesn't, as long as you follow the recipe, then you're not gonna have a problem with this one. I think this is a bit more advanced. So in some ways, it's a, there are some advanced recipes in here. I think, uh, so if you're starting out, this is a good one, but I think probably this would be more of a second cookbook rather than the first one but if you want pastries this has got some really great great pastry recipes i always use this book for getting my measurements correct for my pastries and because i use a lot of gluten-free flour which it doesn't have in here but i have found that following her recipe as if it was normal flour it's worked just fine so a really great book um, you're not gonna ro go wrong with least cookbooks at all. Of my cookbooks, I have lots of cookbooks, and my husband does too. Um, this one I bought uh, because I wanted to do a bit more research on how to cook more sensibly, um, how to make food go further, and how people used to do it back in the past. And this is Clara's Kitchen. And I don't know how old this lady is, because I haven't read all this book yet and I haven't got all the facts, but I think she's in her, she must be in her 80s. And she was a child who lived through the Great Depression in America. So she talks about, and it's beautifully put together and she's got recipes in here, but she talks about how her family supported themselves and fed themselves through the Great Depression and like I said she has got a ton of recipes here she's got a YouTube video I think her son or I don't know grandson gets involved with it and anyway brilliant well worth looking at her YouTube videos if you want to kind of see how you can expand on your food knowledge and just 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 learning to be more frugal with your food, this is a good one. And yeah, got some great stories and history in this book. Okay, that's it for now. I've done my cookbooks. I'll we'll probably do another one another time. I think I've shown you more than enough right now. And yeah, don't forget to kiss the bookworm. See you soon, guys.